Revelations chapter number 14, verse number 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whatsoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruit unto God and to the Lamb. We're in Revelations chapter number 14, verse number 4. And we are in some very exciting passage of Scripture. We have a lot of good information we want to share with you on this particular video. Let's dive right into it. We're talking about the Lamb of God when He returned to Mount Zion with the 140 and 4,000 there. Now, it talks about the 144,000 as being virgins, as not defiling themselves with women. What this is speaking of is spiritually. They did not worship the beast nor his image. They did not take the mark in it, their head or in their right hand. They didn't defile themselves. They would live for Jesus. They would die for Jesus. They would do whatever the Lord ask them to do without question, without backtalk. And they were the first fruit of God. Now, to really understand this, we are going to have to go back and dig into our Old Testament. Why are they mentioned as the first fruit? Well, we know whenever you have a harvest, they're the first or the, the first part of the harvest or the first fruit of the harvest. And that's what's saying. These are the first ones that were going to be harvested spiritually. Not that they're the only ones, but just that they are the first ones of the harvest. Now, let's go back and look at some scriptures. First, let's examine a very good question. Jesus is constantly referred to as the Lamb of God. Yeshua is constantly referred to as the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. And let's see why. And we can see clearly how all of this is pointing back to God's plan of redemption that he gave to men through his holidays that he set up. If we come back over here, let's go back to... Hebrews. Let's read the book of Hebrews. Let's start with the ninth chapter and let's start with verse number 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hand, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, this is saying that Yeshua is the high priest. And a lot of times we as Christians because we don't study it, we, we kind of forget about the office of the high priest. But what was the duty of the high priest? The high priest offered sacrifices to God on the different occasions. People brought up different offerings, a sin offering for if someone may have sinned out of ignorance, a, a meal offering, a, a whole burnt offering. It was the high priest's job to offer up these different offerings to God different offering had different purposes. Now, if we look at Jesus as a high priest, did Jesus offer up offerings? Yes. Our verse tells us right here that Jesus, being the high priest, went before God. And Jesus did not go before God every time, time after time after time after time. Jesus went before God one time with 
his own blood, not the blood of a bullock, not the blood of a heifer, not the blood of a goat. But Jesus went to God with his own blood and offered up sacrifice. I can imagine Jesus went into the holy place in heaven because we know that what we are doing here on earth is just an example of what's going on in heaven. High priest here on earth was patterned after Jesus, the high priest priest in heaven. So Jesus went and took his own blood and sprinkled it upon the altar. And therefore we receive redemption. Now Jesus' blood wasn't the blood of a bullock, the blood of a goat. So therefore he didn't have to constantly repeat itself. He didn't have to constantly do it because his blood once and for all gave forgiveness to man. Now some women say, that sounds good. But when did Jesus do this? Now, let's dig into it. I'm in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. We find here in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, how verse number 12, and ye shall offer that day when, when ye wave the sheath and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto God. Now, we know Jesus was crucified when? The exact time when they killed the lamb for the Passover. So that's the reason why he's constantly referred to as the lamb of God. Why? Because the Passover lamb was an example of the real lamb of God that died to take away the sins of the world. So, now Jesus died on the Passover. We know he was buried on unleavened bread and first fruit he rose three days later. Let's go down to Pentecost. Let's go to verse number 18. And ye shall offer with the bread seven lambs without blemish of the first year. Now, on the day of Pentecost, the high priest was supposed to offer seven lambs without blemish. Now, I can imagine on the day of Pentecost, up in heaven, Jesus having a censer or having his own blood sprinkled it upon the altar in heaven on the four horns of the altar. And once and for all, we receive redemption of our sin. Once we was clean from our sin, that's when the Spirit of God came down on the day of Pentecost. You see how God is constantly working and moving through his holidays. Now, we have the three remaining holidays. The Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkoth. These have yet to be fulfilled spiritually, but we can see them being fulfilled in Revelation. Because it talks about the 144,000 as what? The first fruit of the harvest. It talks about the Lamb of God. We can see how all of this is tied together. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to look on and bless and have your way. Be glorified, be magnified. Help your people everywhere, no matter what they may be going through, no matter what. Give them strength to stand and be strong for you. In Yeshua's name, thank God. Amen. Have a great day.